All right. Hello, everyone. Uh, Sean here. I'm back for another review session of some of the submissions I got from my uh, organic design tutorial that from, geez, about a year ago now I posted it. Uh, so in this su submission here, I have a uh, volunteer, Rome 3 r who messaged me a couple weeks ago and wanted to get some feedback on some of his stuff. Uh, so we have a unusual submission. We got a melee of an axe for this one. Uh, pretty cool. I've done a few like melee weapons in the past, the Warframe style. And we can kind of like talk about that based on some of the reference he's picked up. Um, and then, uh, we'll just kind of go through the submission here. So this is like the final of what was submitted, but I'll start with the reference because I think it's pretty, uh, important to kind of get a baseline on that first before we jump into like critiquing the axe and stuff. So... With Warframe weapons, as I'm sure you've noticed, uh, if you play the game or know the design or whatever, uh, I do feel like that there's quite a bit of variety, <laughs> in, uh, to say the least. Um, and as far as like the the artists and uh, artistic execution of the individual weapons and things like that, is, and, and melees are, are no exception when it comes to this. Uh, none of mine are in here right now, uh, of my designs, but like there's, I can pretty much like identify the artists who kind of like worked on some of these things, but like you got like Lucas's, oh, try that again. I like Lucas is down here. Uh, I think this is like an infested one. You got some, um, what is it? Uh, sentient type stuff here and up top here. Um, some older Tenno weapons. I think this is like one of the newer Tenno weapons. Some Orican ones, older Tenno stuff. I think this is Tenno, feels kind of tenno -y. Could be, could be Corpus too, maybe. These little tube things, uh, a little bit hard to tell. Um, this, I'm pretty sure is Tenno, but yeah, everyone sort of had their own sort of individual way of executing on the weapons. So there's actually quite a bit as far as like how one could go about doing that, which was uh, fine, I suppose. Uh, yeah, so those, those are kind of good to have as like a baseline. I think I mentioned that in the tutorial of like, it's great to have this sort of like guidepost or quality bar sort of like final shape concept. Um, one thing I will note with the swords is that especially some of the older ones, like, uh, like even like maybe this guy here and uh, he'll, he'll get a pass. Um, this thing, this thing, um, they don't have the, and even this thing here, I'd say too, they don't have the most interesting like silhouettes while like some of the more, like this, this is an older one, but it's got like a much cooler kind of silhouette with the blade. Uh, this is the newer one, one of the newer type, type ones. Uh, same thing with this one here. And I think like the, the important thing to take away from this is like the silhouettes are pretty like bold and interesting and kind of like unique. Um, the swords and weapons themselves typically don't have like a lot of that, uh, they, they will every now and again, but not, not to a crazy degree. Um, yeah, okay, that's kind of good for that. Uh, for the material, not material, but like shape language reference where we've got some like Art Nouveau stuff, some bike frames and uh, general sort of like, and I, I don't know if it's like AI generative <laughs> kind of materials here. I don't know what this is. Uh, and some like sleek kind of car stuff where we can kind of take note of some interesting like layering and echoing of shapes and that kind of thing which uh, can all serve like great sort of like detailed purpose for some of this. Uh, but yeah, so that's all good to have like in your back pocket. And of course the classic knife uh, as far as, or no sorry not knife, <laughs> uh, axe as far as like what we got here. Um, and now I'm not an axe specialist, but like I think there's like a couple of interesting things to kind of note here. Uh, particularly like on these older axes, you've got like, obviously this is the classic axe part here, but also I think it's important to note that there's like a pointy horrifying bit back here. You see it appear a couple times in all these different ancient ones, even like this guy here. Uh, so it's like, even like, even this one here, right? Like this could potentially be like a hammer, right? Type thing. So, and even up to like the newer ones, right? Where you've got sort of like the broader axe blade and this kind of almost like a knife kind of coming up the back. So, a potential takeaway from this is that there's like two, there's like number one and number two as far as like potential attack mechanisms. And that'll be something to potentially consider when we're like looking at some of these references or, or the some of the concepts as we kind of go forward here. Uh, yeah, and maybe Spear's a bit out of out of place, but I mean, like that's there's some interesting sort of like shape language and stuff happening in there, which is kind of cool. And even some of this stuff here, I think is kind of neat to, to note as far as like how things are flowing into one another. Uh, yeah, okay, cool. So I won't linger too much on this stuff here, but it's, it's pretty cool to look at. 
Okay, and I'm not super sure what this one is. I think it's just like an accidental, like turning this one on and off. Uh, but okay, let's take a look at some of these sketches here. Um, yeah, so these are looking pretty cool. I think the number one thing I think uh, that some of these are doing, I think is pretty successful, is like really kind of pushing the silhouette. Uh, and some, I've got some other examples up top here of like old, old things that I've done silhouette wise uh, on some of the melees. And we can talk about what sort of I'm trying to really like push on those. And I think some of the more successful ones in here are ones like eight and four. And if we jump over to number two here, uh, some like this, I think this is like, this is a good example of like what, what I want to see and that like you've gone too far. <laughs> that might sound like a bad thing, but it's actually a really good thing because like once you go too far in a certain direction, uh, or, or executing in a certain way, like okay, this is this is too organic. This is too, it's like too many sort of contradictory elements here. Whereas like you've got your like hard angles, organics, and it's all kind of mushing together in this attachment area that kind of creates a very like fragile and frail type shape. So this is this is would be too far in that kind of degree. Where I think uh, like some of these shapes here are getting kind of like nice and sort of like bold sort of forms, which I think if we jump back to our reference here, you're starting to get some of this stuff here, right? Like you want that big, bold, sort of like sharp, organic, kind of sharp, sharpy bits and stuff and, and pointies, um, which you're gonna wanna have. Uh, where I think these could be improved overall with all of these is like really amping up some of the, the silhouettes of these things. And I've done some quick paint overs in the, the final there that we can kind of take a look at for, the, uh, for those guys in a moment here. What I mean by that is just like really pushing these things, amping them up, warping them. And like this idea that I have, or at least like on Warframe, I thought was like pretty prevalent of like, okay, you've got weapon, whatever, X, like an ax we'll say for this, or like sniper rifle, whatever. It's like, okay, what is, what is a sniper rifle to like push to its like breaking point? It's like absolute limit of like madness of, Yes, this is a sniper rifle. It is the ultimate sniper rifle. Uh, we're like, where's an example here? Um, we're like, the whole top of the gun is a scope, right? Like, really pushing it and pushing it to, to the point where it's just like, it's absolutely ridiculous. Um, and that was something that like, I ended up doing quite a bit in, in, in a lot of these things here. And so I think the further you go as far as like really amping up the shapes and that's where you get to play with like warp, transform, uh, where was um, liquify is another really good one to kind of play with in here. Uh, just so you can kind of get like, you can get the unexpected, right? Um, and, and, and then you, you might actually you might actually kind of like like some of these things or get some unexpected results that that uh, that you might want to go with. And if you stay a little bit kind of too safe with the overall massing of these things here, I feel like you're going to potentially miss out on some of those things. Uh, so really take the time to like, especially at this stage here, right, because this is in, in concept art, the, the thumbnailing sort of stage, like the very first stage is, uh, as I've talked about, like we were kind of considering silhouette and you're already you're, you're doing a great job here of like considering like material breakup too and and sort of like general flow of the shapes and that kind of stuff i think all that is really good so uh the more you can kind of push it to the breaking point the better um the the other thing i think that could potentially be improved here would be thinking about how you're combining the materials uh so some of these i think it's really, you're doing a good job in ones like four where you're trying to think about how are these going to like fuse together and it's not always clear in Warframe weapons how that typically happens. Uh, sometimes it's like, if we kind of, actually, if we jump back to the, the knife here, or sorry, the, the more modern one, uh, like, I guess old ones or classic axes, you've got like a piece of wood or something kind of going through there, right? Kind of like holding this thing together. And then you've got these little like bolt things kind of holding it in place. Um, in more like knives or tactical ones, I guess, you've actually got like, the piece of metal will go like all the way through it and it's just going to get wrapped with some sort of like plastic wrapping or, or hand wrapping or something or, or weave or something if it's going to be fancy. Uh, but yeah, for these guys here, you'll notice it's more about like the, like going back to like that layering, right? Like some, some have like that traditional kind of like wrap type feel. Others, it's going to be this like crisscrossing combination of like the layering, but also these different materials. I think this one's a good example. 
Uh, and we can kind of like look at some of the ones I've done before as a, as a potentials. So yeah, so as, like, as far as Tenno designs, this is actually a really old Tenno design that I did. Uh, but like thinking of the blades, not so much as like flat forms, but definitely dimensional and almost like these organic type uh, elements kind of in here and how they sort of like mesh with the machine parts, right? Um, and so always like, once again, really thinking dimensionally and like, well, how are these shapes gonna overlap each other, right? So the blade, the blade elements here are almost like gear pieces and then other pieces are like, the, this dark stuff here is like gonna be underneath it, right? And it's like encasing it. So it's like over top of these materials. Uh, and I think that's like a really important sort of takeaway because a lot of these are going to start to feel like a little bit, um, well, let's go back here, uh, potentially flat in that regard. So really kind of pushing, you're doing, yeah, you, you do have like some like little like nubs and stuff like that here, but really starting to think about how they're going to come together. That's like that guy there, so. And potentially there's like overlapping. I kind of like the other one. Let's stick with this one. Uh, there's potentially like overlapping and things like that and other sort of like fun stuff that you can kind of play with here. So it's not necessarily super flat. And that was something I definitely went out of my way to try to do with like these kinds of designs where it's almost like, um, I don't know, is, is a scabbard? Oh man, I can't remember the name of it. Uh, where like you have this sort of like wrapping around and it's like prote uh, protecting the player's hand. Like these are some of the sketches from that that were like super early. And you can see like I'm really pushing what what is meant to be a relatively simple weapon of like this and then or the or in the, or in the traditional sense it's like that right uh or is it i don't know i can't remember the type of sword this is where it's kind of like you've got like that hand cover on it right but i wanted to make it sort of like more organic so i think and then like other ones i'm, ex I'm experimenting with like making the blade a part of it or something or bringing the covering but then there's like all this other sort of tech tech crap kind of coming over it pretty much for lack of a better word uh, so I think that's going to be a big thing of like, how much can you really push some of these shapes here? Uh, and, and one area, like I think of this one here, that's not so much working is definitely the handle it feels like it's kind of like, like very awkward while some other potentially more successful ones might be, let's see, something simpler like this potentially. And I think you've got some successful looking ones in the, uh, the, the resolved page. But I would definitely avoid some more organic ones that kind of just feel like like a tapeworm or something or an organ. This is kind of terrifying. Uh, like that kind of a shape there. Uh, you could definitely sort of like play with some shapes kind of coming down and like into this form here and, and kind of like really pushing it as much as you can. Uh, or in some of these, I like actually have like, here, let's actually uh, stroke. Oh, 50, yikes. I think that three, see what it does. This should be black. There we go. And multiply. Uh, no, we actually want it on there. Um, yeah, so like maybe this kind of comes down. There's like a, a cover, like a metal kind of thing here kind of coming over. Yeah, so there's like lots of opportunities to sort of like play with some of these shapes here. Um, that's a really gross shape, but I think you get the idea. Uh, yeah, and so I think like definitely being careful to avoid and be cognizant of like ones that have too much breakup or like little kind of patchwork of things. And, and I think like blades at the bottom are kind of something to potentially avoid. Uh, Cause like if you're just, if this is like in your belt or something and you're grabbing for it without look, looking, uh, I feel like something like this could potentially like stab you or cut your <laughs> arm or something. Uh, so I would usually like opt for just like doing like buckles or like a circular sort of ornamentation type things, like a, a typical sort of pommel type thing for a, a weapon. Uh, but yeah. Okay, so let's jump over to the, these guys here. Okay, so I think these were looking pretty cool. Um, you took B, which was, I was surprised you would go with that one, as, as, as I feel like it is definitely like the most complicated and <laughs> a bit overly uh, kind of, oh, still pause going by. <coughs> a bit overly complex as far as like some of these shapes are interacting. Uh, and like I said, sort of like organic mixed with the inorganic kind of forms here kind of like makes this feel a little bit too contrasty. Uh, so I got, like I said, I have some some paintovers here of some of the stuff I was doing. 
Uh, number one suggestion I would say is like, don't do these like really techy kind of stuff in here. Uh, if we go back to some of the, of these things here, you always want to keep in mind this idea of like what the blade is and you've got like a sharp edge right here. This is your sharp and it kind of comes up to a, an edge, right? And it's always like being cognizant of what that form is, is going to really help you kind of create a believable type blade. Uh, I mean, there's some obviously bullshit that happens in here, which makes no sense. Uh, Cause what is this? Uh, what's going to happen? <laughs> like when you try to follow the form, it doesn't, doesn't uh, make anything. Um, but yeah, you can definitely like see, you can see within these, like I'm really pushing the form, really pushing the silhouette as much as possible. Uh, and I don't even, can you remember what this is? I think this is like a small object you throw or something. Uh, I think we ended up going with something like this and then like it explodes on impact or something. Uh, but yeah, how I'm sort of like detailing out some of these like more organic joints here could be kind of interesting. Uh, so that could be one potential for that. Oh, sorry, I'm trying to refine where I'm going here. Um, yeah, so yeah, coming in here and kind of playing with some of these these attachments and how they kind of connect and that kind of thing, uh, and the blades. I would like I said avoid the kind of like more techy kind of techy kind of feel to it, and and opt for kind of these more like organic kind of like uh, going back to your reference of this, like you're doing like this kind of work in it, right, or like this kind of work into the surface, but almost like a. Good, piecemeal uh, chunk chunk of these things kind of connected, right? At, at, like, at joints where they sort of connect. Um, so it could be kind of fun, right? I guess do some cool abstract shapes and they connect in interesting ways and that doesn't, they don't always turn out. <laughs> uh, but always like considering, you always want to think about these as you're doing them so they don't kind of get too abstract for their own good. Uh, yeah. And maybe keeping them sort of like Thinking about how like it could potentially make some areas too fragile or whatever, uh, but always considering like where the blade is going to be, right? But I would I'm not a huge fan of like this blade shape or this like, this form in here anyway, so we won't focus on that guy there. Uh, let's focus on some of the paintings that I've done here. Okay, so a couple of things that I think that are going to be really useful is like number one, really considering about how these things are attaching. Because if we kind of like undo this here, it kind of just like, uh, I guess I, I guess I do this a little bit too, but like there's always an opportunity to sort of uh, show how these things kind of like connect into forms a lot more. So like you've got these little buckles kind of going over top of this thing or like uh, going back to this, there's this idea of like, maybe these are pretty dimensional. Maybe they're not blades. They're actually kind of like these, these kind of tuby things that are kind of actually rounded like this that kind of come down and and they're attaching to like these these surfaces here right with, like weird buckles and stuff uh and so i think that is kind of a good way to to potentially look at some of the stuff here of like up top here is like wrapping over the metal or it's like this or like this uh and then this is the blade part right it kind of sharpens out there right and you could like give some of the stuff like a bit of a lip or something like that could be pretty cool um that's a big thing. I was thinking I was like seeing um, like emissives are a good thing. You've got some here, but I would kind of make them a little bit more obvious. Uh, playing with some of these like potential shapes in here of like kind of really kind of emphasizing thick thing and kind of giving, playing with the undulations a little bit more. And I would be careful of like pieces like this that might feel a little bit kind of like fragile-ish. Uh, but I don't know. I'm, like I've said, I'm, I'm a bad person for that kind of stuff since I always do like the most fragile looking designs with the excuse of it's the future, who cares? Uh, especially for something like Warframe, you can really get away with some, I think like fragile things you can get away with more, but like if it just feels like too organically frail, I think you're less likely to sort of like find success in that. Uh, let's kind of turn this on and off a little bit more. Okay, yeah, so I've mostly focused some paint over on this guy here, really kind of pushing that idea of uh, maximalizing and like what is this idea of this axe to like 11 and pushing it like as far as possible to the breaking point because uh, like a lot of the shapes as I mentioned before axes or sort of the swords maybe not the best you can definitely see we're like we're starting to push some of the shapes like around this point here and this point here further and further and even like this is like weird as hell uh, so abstracting these shapes a little bit is going to be to your benefit and kind of coming back 
that here and like really emphasizing the size, right? Like you want this to feel like brutal, like it's going to slice a dude in half and then, and then gouge out an eye or like take out half their skull or something or like tear off a chunk of armor with this one here. Uh, you could even, I don't know, let's, let's even like make this even freakier, right? Like, I can't remember if I've already said this before, but it's like it's better to go like too far with this stuff uh, than like kind of play it safe because like the moment you kind of go too far here, um, you'll know to kind of like pull it back in certain ways. But like unless you go there, you're not going to know, right? So definitely kind of go as go as far as you can with some of these things here and really amping up the shapes and all that kind of business. Uh, and, you'll, and, and the results will like speak for themselves, right? Um, like you're, I can see like especially in your sketches, like you're starting to these are going in the direction, but they just need to be like. A little bit further, right? And that's where you usually, like I said before, like some of the, the filter tools and warp and stuff is really going to help you sort of like crank, uh, crank this up. Uh, so that'll be like my main sort of thought on the like top blade part and definitely considering how it sort of combines, right? Because that's always a, that's always a, it is a huge challenge to think about like how do these organic forms kind of like merge with this like metal thing. It's like, well, make the, make the metal kind of organic, right? Make it not just like a flat blade. Uh, and, and you'll find like much better success with that, right? There we go. Right? That already feels like a little bit kind of better there. It's a little bit too squiggly lines. <laughs> uh, but yeah, and then like I think there's a little like some more like the simplicity of the handle you've got here is looking pretty good. Uh, some of these other ones are getting a little bit too like they wouldn't be easy to hold and too even. Um, and I feel like if you're using the gray as like a, a tech type indicator element, um, I think having it be on the hand handle might be a little bit kind of awkward and even having it be like a little bit noodly might be kind of weird. Like I expect this to like flop or something as you attack. So yeah, and I added like a little bit of um, like grippiness to it. So like maybe this helps the person to kind of hold on to it potentially kind of get like goes back to that kind of organic type feel. Um, you could kind of contrast that potentially with something a little bit more rigid. It's definitely like an, an opportunity here. Right, to kind of like make it feel more like a sh uh, an artificial shell going over top of it. And it's definitely going to be opportunity for you to kind of like insert some color breakup and stuff like that. Because an important part of Warframe is fashion frame. And every time there's some, some like decaling and stuff like that, that'll be like a swappable element for color and that kind of thing. So you always want to try to consider and implement that kind of stuff, right? Which is how you get garish stuff like this, where it's like that bright red with the black and stuff. Um, yeah, so some sort of, maybe uh, maybe blue would work. Let's see if there's like some sort of like cool shape we could have in here, who knows? We're just kind of keeping it abstract, it looks terrible. I don't know, you get the idea. Uh, yeah, it could be nice and simple. Or even just like a band of color kind of going down it. Um, though I would probably not like make it as super bright and crazy as I'm doing here. You could probably make it like a little bit kind of like calmer, just so the emissives kind of like are the, the highlight of the show here, right? They kind of draw the eye to the right locations. So yeah, okay. I think that's kind of a handy, handy thing. And something that I always do is I, I noticed here is like, a, which I, it's good to see that you're throwing in like emissives and stuff like that, is I like to kind of use like the metal of some of these elements here as like a framing thing for, for the emissives. So like, like you can see like here and here, we could kind of just like throw it as almost like a buckle. Like I have a little image here. Uh, this can be like metal and then it's like surrounded by like the organic tech matter type stuff. Uh, and then you have this like recess sort of like emissive kind of coming out of it potentially. Uh, and so you can kind of like use that as a consistent like visual language indicator. Cool. All right. I think that's about good. Uh, I think these are these are pretty cool. It's great to see like all the explorations that you did earlier on here. Uh, I, I apologize if I repeated myself a little bit here. I think there's a couple of <laughs> done a couple of recordings of this. Just went, wasn't sure if I'd already uh, said some of that stuff. Uh, but yeah, I think I think you did a good job here. Lots of lots of explorations here. I think you went in the right direction of like. It, even though I like only did six in the the demo, you don't necessarily have to do like exactly six. It could take six, could take twenty. Uh, then of course, like when you present these to like an art director, you want to sort of like trim the ones that might be too safe or that you don't like because you don't want to end up doing that all the way to the end. Uh, to kind of like have a nice sort of set 
set ones of like they have a good amount of variety of like shape and size everything everything is like very very different and generally you're behind every single one because like you don't want to get stuck designing one that you're not a fan of all the way through to finish uh so yeah i think there's definitely some some cool uh, opportunity and possibilities if you decide to take these further on to like 3d and stuff but yeah hopefully hopefully that was helpful and anyone else who's uh listening in um enjoyed the information i hope yeah I'm, I'm hoping it's been a while since i've done like another video of this i'm crossing my fingers i didn't repeat myself too much from those ones there but uh yeah like this is a, a cool cool break from the the weapon or the the shooty guns so yeah nice cool uh best of luck on on continuing on with this or, or whatever you choose to do with it Thanks again for picking up the tutorial. And if anyone else is interested in that, you can go grab it at the link below at ArtStation or on Gumroad. All right. Thanks so much. Bye.